Hello, metal students. Uh, today I am going to show you how to saw. Now, if this is your first time sawing, the first thing you need to remember is to be patient with yourself. It is not a super easy skill to pick up quickly, but it isn't a difficult skill. You just have to give yourself time and understanding and know that just like in life, you're going to fail a few times. And in metals, that means you break a couple saw blades. <laughs> so the first thing you need to know is that this is the tool that we're going to use. This is called a jeweler's coping saw. Um, this tiny little guy right here is our blade. Yeah, I don't think my camera's going to focus on that. Um, this is an ought to blade, um, which just indicates the size of the blade. In class, we use um, a zero um, or a two. Okay, so this is your coping saw. The next thing you need to know the name of is what's called a bench hook. So that's what you see right here in front of me. This is your bench hook. This is where you saw. All right, you got the two basics. Jeweler's coping saw, bench hook. All right, the next thing we need to talk about is safety. And in all things in metals, we always talk about safety. So for sawing, you need goggles. Goggles or glasses, either or, will work, okay? So I've got my goggles on always. You can tie your hair back, but it's not necessary for this step. If you've got super long hair, you probably want to tie it back just so it's not annoying you, okay? Um, the first thing you need to learn how to do is to change out your saw blade from your frame. To do that, you need to take these two um, wing nuts, open them up, and then you pull out your broken blade. I don't have a broken blade right now. You put the new blade in, tighten, tighten, and you're good to go. What you want to have in a coping saw is a really tight blade. So when you're done, if you go like this, I'm pushing pretty hard. Do you see how there's not a lot of movement left and right with my blade? A lot of my students, first time they put a blade in, I do that, and it's like wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You don't want that. It's going to break. It's not going to saw well. No good. You need it nice and tight in there, okay? Um, so... To change out our saw blade, we're going to take this end, this little hook guy here, and we're going to put it right over the edge of our table, okay? Then we're going to loosen up the wing nuts, and if this blade is broken, we'd take it out, we'd throw it away. We'd get a new blade, we'd put it in. The one thing you need to know is that the direction of the teeth is really important. There are little teeth on this little blade. There's a flat side and there's a toothy side. The toothy side should point out and away from the interior of the saw. And the little teeth have a direction. You want the teeth to point towards you. So you always double check that. Then in this little gap right here between the wig nut and the saw frame, you're gonna put one end. You wanna push it all the way till it hits the very end. You'll tighten the blade or the wing nut. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side in that little gap right here. You're going to put your little saw blade. And then what you've got to do is push the saw frame together. Okay? And so for me, what that means is um, I am right handed. Uh, I put my left hand around the end of the, the blade. I protect the end of the saw with my pinky finger because I'm going to be pushing into this part of my hand and I don't want to hurt myself. So I've got the hook over here. I've got my left hand around my handle with my pinky protecting my chest. I'm going to lean my chest in, my whole body weight, and you might see my camera shifting as my, my bench I'm working at shifts. Put that blade in that gap and push. I lost my hook. Push it in as hard as you can go. Tighten it nice and tight and let go. At that point, you should have a good firm blade. Okay? I don't want you to be scared is the next thing that I want to tell you guys because this is yours to control. It's under your mechanical control. So as I'm sawing, I have the ability to stop. Okay? And it's a little blade, right? You're going to probably get cut at some point, but it's not going to be major. Okay? It's a little blade. 
So I get cut sometimes, and it's kind of like a paper cut. We're going to try to avoid it. It doesn't feel good. We'll clean it up really well if it happens, so we'll put a Band-Aid on it. But it's no big deal. You're not going to cut your finger off with this, okay? Um, so we got our blade in. We got our goggles on, and we're not afraid. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. All right? We're good. The next thing we need to talk about is how we sit to saw. All right? Now this one's a little harder to show on my computer camera here, but what I want to do is line up, I am right-handed, so this is my right shoulder. I am going to line up my right shoulder with my bench hook, so I'm going to shift my body to the left so you can see my arm here is lined up with my bench hook, all right? If I'm a lefty, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to line up my left arm, my left shoulder with my bench hook, okay? The next thing you want to do is you want to have your elbow at a 90. Okay, so right now my elbow's at a 90. Hard to see from your angle, but trust me, it's at a 90. If you're sitting here and you're not at a 90, and I'm going to shift up here, and your saw is like buried in your armpit and you're tilted forward and it's a tight angle, back yourself up, my friends. You're too close. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to back up, shoulder lined up, saw lined up straight in front of me. When we get down to the sawing of the different lines, we'll talk more about this, but the last thing, you're lined up, you got a nice blade, your metal's on your bench hook, is you got to keep that saw straight up and down. You do not tilt left, you do not tilt right. That's the worst thing you can do, okay? You also don't want to tilt forward or back. Those things don't damage the saw quite as much, or the metal, but tilting left and right, tweaking that blade is going to snap it every single time. So if you're snapping a lot of blades, you're probably tilting your, your saw left and right. So just be aware of that, okay? So safety, you got goggles on, you got a tight saw blade, you got your bench hook ready to go, and you're not afraid you're going to try something new. So let's talk a little bit more about technique. All right, let's get started. So when I have students do their first sawing experience, I usually have them start with a straight line, a curvy line, and a zigzag. So I'm going to have you get out a piece of scrap metal, draw one straight line with Sharpie on it, one curvy line, and one zigzag. We're going to start with the straight line. So when you saw, like I said before, you need to make sure that your shoulder, your sawing hand shoulder is lined up with the bench. So my arm is lining up here correctly. Then you're going to take your coping saw and you want to use this gap in your bench hook to saw with. And you need to hold your metal pretty tight. So I'm going to move that metal so it's supported left and right on my bench hook. And I'm going to hold tight with my left hand. I'm a righty. You can just reverse that. I'm going to take my saw blade. I'm going to line it up right at the beginning of that straight line. And I'm going to pull down. Okay, I'm going to pull down until I've got a little gap. And then straight up and down, I'm going to saw. It's important you don't tilt your saw frame forward or back, left or right. The most dangerous way to tilt that is if you tilt it left or right. Any kind of tweaking of the blade left or right like that is going to snap your blade, um, which is really frustrating. And you will snap your blade. It's inevitable. Uh, but we want to lose as few as possible. So I've got it on the line, and I'm just going to very gently go up and down. One of the biggest mistakes you can make in sawing, other than tilting your blade, um, is pushing. Saw blades are meant to pull yourself through the metal. So if I go slow and easy, I'm going to have a much better saw line. My hand will hurt. <laughs> There's my snap blade. My hand will hurt less and all will go well. I can also tell you that, uh, you know, talking and sawing, as just referenced here, doesn't typically go well. And then back to sawing the straight line. This time I'm not going to talk. When you get to the end of your line, you want to straighten up that blade, slow down, and little saws at the end to pop through. 
on the curvy one, once you've mastered the straight, you're going to line your blade up in the same direction the line starts as. So notice I'm not lining my blade up like so. I'm lining up with the direction of the line. A little saw. And go. While you're sawing a curved line, you want to keep the front of the blade on the line at all times. You slowly turn the metal and the blade to follow that line. Take it slow, take it easy. Alright, so there's that one. Nice smooth cut. The next thing I'm going to show you is this zigzag, but we're going to take a pause right here because these first two cuts, the straight and the curvy one, they're a lot easier than that zigzag, but they're not easy when it's your first time sawing. So I want to talk about some things that you might be noticing and help you out in making a better saw line. So one of the things that you might notice, um, or you should notice, is the sound of your saw. So I'm going to flip to this little scrap. If I'm, if I'm going nice and easy, smooth and easy, I'm not pushing, this is what my saw sounds like. Okay? nice and easy. Now I want you to hear what it sounds like when I push and you might even notice a little difference in my saw um, how it moves through the metal. Okay did you see that when I pushed that did not go so well for me or my metal? I'm using a thinner gauge or thickness of metal so when I push that meant it bent the metal. Um, so a nice smooth easy saw is going to give you better and quicker results than pushing. Okay, hear the difference. Um, the other thing, I'm just going to remind you this again, because it feels unnatural for your body to do this movement in the beginning, keep that saw frame straight. If you're tilting forward, it might be that you're too close to your bench hook. Maybe scoot that stool back so it's hard for you to tilt forward. Um, and you really just got to pay attention to that angle of your hand. So if it's not going well, if you're snapping a lot of blades, I really want you to focus on that straight up and down, straight up and down. Nice and easy and smooth. Okay? At this point in time, if I was you, I'd take a pause, I'd practice those straight lines, I'd practice those curvy lines, and when you feel more confident with your sawing, come back and watch this next one, because it's a little tricky, and it's hard to show you. I have to explain how it feels to saw these corners. So you're going to start the same way that you've always started. Okay, You're going to line that saw blade up, nice little pull to give yourself a divot. Okay. You're going to saw right to the corner. I'm going to hold on both sides here. A lot of my students are like, ah, oh, your finger is too close to the blade. But if you think about where the sharp part of the blade is right here, this finger is behind it. And I could actually hold my um, metal here while sawing as long as I move it in time because the only way I'm going to cut my blade or my finger if my finger is in front of it is if I get too close because I'm not sawing at an angle right I'm up straight up and down and that metal is going to stop it now not the best idea to put your finger in front but sometimes you have to just give it enough space take it slow okay so I'm going to saw right into that corner and when I get to the corner I'm going to pause now this corner sawing technique was finally explained to me um, gosh, after taking metals for three years in college, when I took my first metals class outside of college with um, Paul Zabo, who is now my father-in-law, and I'd always struggled with sawing and I'd always struggled with corners until I had Paul as a teacher and he told me how to do corners. Okay, so I'm at the corner. I need to turn left, right? I'm going left. So I'm going to push gently towards the right, straight to the right. Okay, and I'm going to do slight, tiny curves. I'm going to pull down, turn a little, pull down, turn a little, pull down, turn a little. I'm not pushing forward. I'm still pushing to the right. No forward movement. Push to the left and down. Now my saw is totally in line. I'm going to go forward again. Okay, right to the corner. Now I need to turn to my right. So I'm going to push my saw blade to the left, so it's pushing against this edge of the metal. I'm going to push it left, no forward movement. I'm going to hold it in place, pushing to the left. Small, small, short, slow. 
And what you're doing is you're kind of filing out a teeny little curve there for that blade to fall into. Okay, now it's facing the right direction. I'm gonna saw forward to the corner. I'm gonna push to the right this time because I'm turning left. Tiny little, tiny little easy saws. All right, my friends, that is how you saw, or at least the basics of it. It's now time for you to practice. Pay attention to how your body's positioned. Take it slow and easy. Wear those goggles. Don't be afraid. And practice till you have a level of comfort with it. Stay tuned for my next video, which will talk more about sawing specific designs out and piercing and how you put all those skills together. Thanks much. Have a good day.